Well, that's priceless. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last week we talked about being faithful. I told you we were going to continue that this morning. As, as, I, as I got ready for church, and I don't like to give the devil any credit, and I certainly am not patting him on the back, but there's one thing he is, is faithful. At what he does. Amen. He's faithful at what he does. Matter of fact, he's got that down better than most church people. Amen. He's faithful. And I got to thinking about in the Word of God, we find Goliath, and he was an enemy of the God's people. And every day the Bible says whenever they were out there and the battle was set in array and the Israelites were on one side and the Philistines were on the other, every day, at the same time, mm -hmm. Goliath would come up and beat his chest and make his noise. Every day. See, the devil's faithful. We find over there, and I thought about Delilah this morning. The Bible says she pressed Samson daily. Mm -hmm to try and find out where his strength was at. Daily, she was faithful to press him. Goliath was faithful to blow off. The devil is faithful to tempt you. Guess what? Whenever Eve walking around there in the garden, guess who shows up? The devil. Here, eating this fruit. When Jesus is fasting in the wilderness, guess who shows up? The devil. Amen. He's always Johnny on the spot, ready to trip you, ready to get you at your weakest moment ready to attack, and he's faithful in doing what he does. Amen? We were talking about last week how the Word of God tells us that faithful people to God is a hard thing to find. Amen? It's rare. The Bible says in Proverbs, the 20th chapter, in the 6th verse, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can find? It's rare. David would say in Psalms 12 and 1, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Faithful people are hard to find. They always have been, apparently, since the Word of God's talking about it way back then. And it still applies today. It's hard to find people who are faithful. The word faithful means trustworthy. It means sure. It means persistent. It means consistent. Jesus said in one of the Gospels, when the Son of Man returns, will He find faith? And you know what He was talking about right before that, Brother Tommy? He was talking about a little widow woman who went to an unjust judge and beat on His door asking Him to avenge her of her adversaries. And at first the Bible says He wouldn't do it. But what did she do? She's faithful daily to knock. Avenge me of my adversary. And finally the Bible says, even though He wasn't afraid of God, he didn't regard man because of her continual coming. <clears throat> because of her faithfulness. The judge said, I'm going to do this because she's bothering me. Oh my. I wish we'd faithful, bo faithfully bother the enemy like the enemy faithfully bothers us. Amen. How about let's turn this thing around? Instead of him chasing us, let's chase after him a while. Amen. Instead of him putting us on the run and making us hide in the closet, let's put him on the run and make him hide in the closet. The reason he attacks your faithfulness is because he knows the importance and the worth of being faithful. God puts a high premium on being faithful today. What did we learn last week? That whenever he was welcoming those in, those faithful servants, welcoming them, welcoming them into the kingdom of God, what did he say? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. So if you ever wonder what might be the first words you hear from Jesus when you cross over to the other side, that might be them. Welcome home, thou good and faithful servant. We don't put a lot of faithfulness on what our pastors do. Pastors put a great deal of, of, a, of a premium on faithfulness. Amen. Because we're the ones that stands in the pulpit and looks out there and sees your pew empty when you're not faithful to church. We're the ones that feel the brunt of it whenever you're not faithful to give in the offering plate because you're not the one that has to worry about the bills. Amen? You come to church, the lights are on. You don't know nothing about the light bill. Amen? But the pastor knows when you're not faithful to church. The pastor knows when you're not faithful to give. God knows when you're not faithful to pray. Sooner or later, the pastor will know it because of the show. Amen? 
You put on a show for so long, but after a while, your unfaithfulness in your walk with God will begin to show. It will begin to become apparent that you're not praying like you should. You're not reading the Word like you should. You're not being faithful to God like you should. And faithfulness is a hard commodity to find in the day that we live in. As far as being faithful to God, now we talked last week about people are faithful to their job. There's some people that hadn't missed a day's work in I don't know how long. They're faithful. Because they know if they're not faithful, they won't get that paycheck. They know if they're not faithful, they may get fired. There's a consequence to not being faithful to your job today. There are people who are faithful in paying their bills. Most people are because they know the consequence if they don't. They're faithful to pay their light bill. If we weren't faithful to pay the lights today, guess what? You'd have came in here, we'd all sit around the candle in our hand because they would cut it off. The light company don't cut you no slack. You pay it or you get cut off. There is a consequence to not being faithful today in those type of things. To your job? How about to your marriage? There's a consequence today. People don't think about it a lot of times until it's over and there's, it's too late to stop it. But there's a consequence of not being faithful to your wife. There's a consequence of not being faithful to your husband. And that consequence is called divorce. <laughs> Destruction of your family. Amen? Separation. Alimony. Child support. There's consequences today for your actions of not being faithful to things in the world. Well, i got news for you. I'm not saying that you're not saved today. I'm not telling you that because you lack in faithfulness that you're not saved. But I will tell you this. There is a consequence today in you not being faithful to God. There is a consequence today. First off, it will stunt your spiritual growth if you're not faithful in your prayer life if you're not faithful in reading the Word, if you're not faithful in your attendance to church, if you're not faithful in giving, all of that stuff will affect your spiritual walk. Every bit of it. To the point to where sooner or later, maybe you will get to the place to where you're so unfaithful, you miss so much, you don't do it for so long till finally it's just not that big of a deal for you. It used to bother you when you didn't make it to church every service. But now, well, I was going to go, but... Maybe I'll do it next time. Sooner or later you're going to run out of next times. Amen. God wants us to be as faithful to Him or at least as faithful to Him as we are to our job. Amen. He wants us to be faithful to Him today. The government makes sure you're faithful to them. They take out the taxes. Don't give you the option. Amen. Before you get your check, FICA gets theirs. Amen. State income tax, they get theirs. <clears throat> Maybe that's the way God ought to do it. When you look on your check stub, here in the corner, say, tithe and offering. And you see how much it was taken out. God don't do it that way. But He'd make sure He got His money then if He did. Because a lot of people, by the time they get theirs, they'll give to God later whenever they got it. God's, not, God's tired of people putting Him on the back burner. He wants us to be faithful in our prayer life. Faithful in our study life. Faithful to the house of God. Faithful in our giving. Faithful in our witness and walk with Him. Amen? He wants, to be, he wants us to be faithful in our witness. The Bible says, so let your light shine before men so that they'll see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We all know that by heart. We've been chewing on that scripture for the past six months. Amen? God wants us to be faithful in our witness. He wants you to be the same tomorrow when somebody walks up to greet you as you are today when somebody walks up to greet you. He wants you to be the same tomorrow in your spiritual walk as you are today. This in one day and out the next, living for the Lord one week and living for the devil the next, that gets old. After a while. And that will stunt your spiritual growth to the place where you won't grow at all spiritually. God wants us to be faithful. He puts a high premium on being faithful. He didn't say, well done, thou good and talented servant. He didn't say, well done, thou good and wealthy servant. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. He don't even ask you. He don't even ask a lot out of us, brothers. Lee. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. Man, you can't get people to be faithful over a few things. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. God puts a high standard, a high premium on being faithful today. And there are consequences to not being faithful. The Bible says in Matthew 24 and 45, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is the servant, whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Blessed are you today that when the Lord comes back, 
He finds you doing what He commissioned you to do, what He's led you to do, what His Word of God, what His Word teaches us to do in the Word of God, what He has taught us to do today. Blessed are we today if we are obedient to His Word. I made a mention of the Scripture to obey is better than sacrifice. Amen. Obedience and faithfulness go hand in hand. Faithfulness is very important today. Most of the church world has kicked it to the side. We'll get to God whenever we get time. Sooner or later we're going to run out of time. Amen. But blessed is the servant that when his Lord comes, he finds him doing what he's supposed to be doing. The Bible says in Matthew 22 and 14, for many are called, these are scriptures we hit last week. I just want to give them to you before we get to where we're going this week. Matthew 22 and 14, for many are called, but few are chosen. Revelation 17 and 14 adds another category, adds another uh, word to that list there. Called, chosen, and the Bible says faithful in Revelation 17 and 14. It says that they that come with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, they that are with Him are called, they are chosen, and they are faithful. I told you last week, and I hope you're listening today out there by YouTube or out there by radio, called and chosen are up to God. God calls, calls us. God has chosen us. Now it's up to us whether we're faithful or not. Brother Slee said God ain't going to force you to do nothing. He's not going to force you to come to church. He's not going to force you to read the Word. He's not going to force you to pray. He's not going to force you to give. He's not going to force you to be a true witness. He's not going to force you today. He wants you to choose to be faithful. You choose to get to work on time and punch that clock every day that you're scheduled. You choose to pay your bills to keep your stuff from getting cut off. You choose today whether to be faithful to God or not. That's what he's looking for. God is faithful and he's looking for a people with the same type of characteristic that he has. It's part of his nature. It's part of his name. His name is faithful. His word is faithful. God is faithful today and he's looking for some people that will be faithful. Not lackadaisical. Not double minded. But faithful. Not perfect. Don't get me wrong. You're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to fall. I've messed up. I can't do this. Yes, you can. We're not talking about being perfect today. We're he didn't even say, well done, thou good and perfect servant. Can I give you that this morning? Brother Spacey, he didn't say, well done, thou good and holy servant. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. He's looking for somebody that's living for Him today to still be living for Him tomorrow. He's looking for somebody with the steadiness, with the faithfulness to be able to hold to His unchanging hand and to live for Him in these last days. Faithful. Faithful. Matthew 25 and 21 is the scripture that I was trying to quote while ago. It says, The Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, in those wonderful words this morning. That's what I want to hear. The Bible tells us in Revelation 19 and 11 that his name is faithful. It says, Behold, it says, Heaven opened and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. We talked about how Moses was faithful. He wasn't perfect, but he was faithful. We talked about Abraham. The Bible says that he was faithful. He wasn't perfect. He made mistakes. But he was faithful. David was a faithful servant, the Bible says. He wasn't perfect. But he was faithful. Amen. Even when he fell down, he still held to God and his faith in him and said, Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. I've sinned. See, falling down ain't dead. Amen. The most important thing, ain't not, not that I'm belittling it any, it's not a good thing to fall, but the most important thing is whether you get up, brush the dust off, and go on a little bit farther down the road. Amen. I like what Brother Slee said, if you fall forward, at least you're closer to your goal than you were when you didn't fall. Amen. Just get up and go on. Get up and go on. Be faithful today. And I told you last week we was going to talk about a man who knew something about being faithful. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the Apostle Paul. Almost half of the number of the times that you'll find the word faithful in the Word of God, they are used in the writings of the Apostle Paul. In his closing testimony in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, he sums it up by saying this. And I'd like for these words to be truthfully on my lips as I lay on my deathbed. Of course, he wasn't on his deathbed. He was in jail getting ready to be delivered to the Nero's chopping block. But he says these words, and they speak for themselves. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Was Paul perfect? No. He'd be the first one to tell you that. Matter of fact, he said, I'm the chief of sinners. I'm the least of the least. 
He said, when I want to do good, I can't find it to do it. That which I want to do, I don't do it. Those things which I don't want to do, I wind up doing those. So he made it plain that he wasn't perfect. Oh, but the Bible makes it plain that he was faithful in his walk with the Lord. So was he perfect? No. Was he faithful? You better believe he was. Listen how he would open two of his letters to two different churches. Ephesians. He would open up his letter to the church of the Ephesians. He would say, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints, to the saints which are at Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. In the book of Colossians, he would open it up like this, to the saints and the brethren in Christ, which are at Colossia. It says, Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ. To the saints and the faithful brethren in Christ. So Paul knew what, how important it was to be faithful. The devil knows how important it is for you to be faithful to the house of God. Why do you think it's harder for you to get out of the house and come to church on Sunday morning than it is for you to get out of the house and go meet somebody for <coughs> breakfast or go meet someone for lunch or to go to school or to go to work or to go to Walmart or to go to Hobby Lobby or to go to Kmart, wherever it is we go. Why do you think it's harder? Or maybe to get up and catch your favorite TV show. I don't know. Why do you think it's harder for us to get out and go to the house of God than it is for us to do all the other things that we want to do because the devil does not want you to be faithful to the house of God. He knows that the Word says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. And he knows if you do forsake the assembling of yourselves together, you can't draw strength from your brothers and sisters. You can't get fed the Word of God not on the same level that you do as the house of God. You can't bask in His Spirit and worship Him the same way that you can in the house of God. So He don't want you to come. Why do you think that people get Tuesday night-itis? Amen. If you're going to get sick one night of the week, around here anyway, it'd be Tuesday night. could be the same way Wednesday night. No matter what night you're, your church has church, that's the night you're going to be attacked the hardest. That's the night you're going to feel the worst because the enemy knows how important it is for you to be faithful and he don't want you to be. He knows. God just wants us to know how important it is to be faithful. Over and over, in the writings of the Apostle Paul, he admonishes the saints to be steadfast, which means to be faithful. He tells them in Galatians 3 and 9, So then they which be of faith and blessed with faithful Abraham, talking about Abraham being faithful, they which be of the faith are blessed with faithful Abraham as an example for them to be faithful as well. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So He is admonishing them. He is instructing them to be faithful. It's important to be faithful today. Hebrews 3 and 14 says, For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Faithful unto the end. Oh, it's important today to be faithful. Peter puts it this way. 1 Peter 5 and 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him for He careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We know that the devil is faithful. He says resist the devil faithfully, steadfastly. Resist him faithfully. That's one of the reasons he keeps coming back. He ain't sure what, how you're going to react the next time. He's not sure how you're going to react. If we can convince him how faithful, how steadfast, how much we have our mind made up, he might go bother somebody else. Not that I wouldn't go bother anybody else, but I'm tired of him bothering me. Amen? Faithful. He's not sure how you're going to react. That's why he keeps coming around. 
Sometimes you act holy. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you act spiritual. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you act like Jesus. Sometimes you don't. Amen. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Over and over, the Apostle Paul admonishes us to be faithful. And over and over, he speaks of the faithfulness of God. How many people know that God's faithful this morning? Aren't you glad He has mercy on us? Because a lot of times we're not faithful. But He's faithful. Always faithful. He would say in 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ. He would tell him another time, same book, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, he who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. God is faithful today. He's a faithful God. What do you think David meant when he said, I've, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He was talking about a faithful God today. God is faithful to take care of His people. We lose sight of that sometimes. We think we're not going to make it. We don't know what we're going to do. We throw up our hands and we worry about it. But if we would just get convinced of this today that He is able. He is faithful. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. If we can get a hold of the old foundational principles of the Word of God and hold on to it, we would be unmovable. We would be steadfast in our faith. Granny lived for God all of her life. Why? Because she was steadfast in the Word of God. Her prayer life was there. Her study life was there. She went to church. She was faithful to God. She knew God's Word was faithful. God is a faithful God today. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 24 says, Faithful is He that calleth you who also will do it. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Titus 1 and 9 says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to, by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. God is faithful today. That's not the question. The question is, is how faithful is his people? How faithful is his people I don't know how many times I've heard people say over the years, oh, if I get left behind, if I have to go through tribulation, if times get rough, I won't deny Him. Well, you can't live for Him now when things are good. <laughs> yeah. Amen? How in the world are you going to live for Him when things get bad? How are you going to be faithful to God? Then, whenever you have all the resistance and all of the, the, the persecution, when you can't be faithful to God today, whenever you don't have those things standing in your way, God wants us to be faithful. Hebrews 10 and 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for He is faithful that promised. God is faithful today. And we could go on and on with the faithfulness. How about this one? This one not written by Paul, but by John. In one of his writings, 1 John 1 and 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us. Or say, oh, aren't you glad that He's faithful? If we'll be faithful to confess, if we'll be faithful to repent, He's faithful to forgive. Amen? If you're not forgiven today, it's your fault. It's your fault because you haven't asked. Because He is faithful. Amen? He is faithful to forgive. He is faithful and just. So Paul was faithful. He wasn't perfect. He taught of the faithfulness of God. The Lord wants us to be faithful in our walk with Him today. The Lord wants us to be faithful in our witness. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 1 and 12, I thank Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that He, listen to this, for that He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And we all know the testimony of the Apostle Paul. You might, you, you might be able to sit back today and look at some people's life and say, well, he's, just, he's lived on a bed of luxury and no wonder he can continue to live for God. That's not the way it was with Apostle Paul. 
He was faithful in his walk with the Lord, even though he said of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. He said, Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I had been in the deep. How many people in here this morning, how many people out there by the sound of my voice have went through those type of things? No, most people haven't. Amen. Yet we find it hard when a little temptation comes around, when a little turmoil or tribulation or persecution hits our life, we find it hard to be faithful to God. How many times have people just threw up their hands and said, forget it. I'm not going to go. I'm not gonna, what's the use? I'm not going to live for God. What's the use in going on? What's the use in going to church? What's the use in giving my tithes? What's the use in being faithful to God if these things are going to happen? I'm pretty sure today, I know I haven't been beaten uh, uh, five times and receive 40 stripes, save one. I know I haven't been beaten three times with rods or I haven't been stoned. Amen. I haven't suffered a shipwreck. All of us have been through things, but I'm pretty sure these are some pretty rough situations compared to what we go through. He says, In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and in thirst and in fastings often, in cold, in nakedness. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. He's under a pretty big load, wasn't he? But then he says, who is weak? I am not weak. Who is offended? And I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory in the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. The Apostle Paul, even though he'd been beaten, he'd, been, he'd had all these stripes, he had been shipwrecked, been left for dead. You know, they, they threw him outside the city once. I think it was the Apostle Paul. Thought he was dead. Been shipwrecked on an island with a bunch of cannibals. Bitten by a snake. In all of this, he was faithful to God. Sitting in a, most of his writings, he did from inside of a prison cell. Amen. By candlelight. Writing letters to the churches. And now listen to this. Trying to get them to be faithful to God. And there they are outside of the prison. There he is inside. If anybody had an opportunity or had what they could try to, 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 to let their flesh, you know, to justify, saying, I just give up, it would have been the Apostle Paul. But he didn't. He was faithful. What do we find him doing in the, in the jailhouse at midnight? Him and Silas. We find him being faithful to worship and praise God. Oh, I wish we could get that this morning. We can't live for God if things get a little rough. We can't live for God if we lose our job. We can't live for God if we lose our house. We can't live for God if we get sick. We can't live for God if somebody dies. We can't live for God if something bad goes on in our life. Here we find the man been through all of this turmoil, yet he's steadfast and he's faithful in his relationship with God. None of those things moved him. None of those things kept him from being faithful to the Lord. Oh my, my. We could all use a good dose of that. Amen. Being faithful to God. God puts a high premium on being faithful today. And He's trying to teach us how important it is to be faithful. I'm closing this morning. Revelation is the second chapter and the eighth verse. Revelation is the second chapter and the eighth verse. Go with me there today. I want to show you something that Jesus says to the church of Smyrna. <clears throat> Revelations, the second chapter, the eighth verse, the Bible says, And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them, which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Can I say that again this morning? Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt by of the second 
death. <clears throat> Faithful. Faithful. The Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. You're not going to endure unless you learn how to be faithful. Matter of fact, that's one of the, really, that's, that's, you could put that in there. He that is faithful to the end, the same shall be saved. He tells the church of Smyrna, and if you look back through history, you'll find that the church of Smyrna was persecuted, went through many things. He says, if you'll be faithful to the end, faithful unto death, I will give thee a crown of life. A few things that we need to be faithful in today. We need to be faithful in prayer. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. I realize you can't walk around all day verbally praying. But you can have a spirit of prayer. You can be faithful in prayer. And basically that's what it's teaching us. Pray. Be faithful in your prayer life. He wants us to be faithful. Number two, He wants us to be faithful in our study of the Word of God. Do you know what the Bible says about study? It says study in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. He wants us to be faithful in His Word today. You could throw this in there. You could throw in the importance of fasting. I'm not even going to ask how much of us are faithful to fast anymore. But the Bible teaches us the Apostle Paul fasted. We just read how that he, in fastings oft, Jesus would talk to the disciples one time when they came to him and said, Lord, why in the world couldn't we deliver this man? Why didn't we have the power? Jesus said, this kind come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. We could learn a lesson today to be faithful in our giving. God wants us to be faithful in giving today. The Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with, with, for with the same measure you meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. We know what Malachi says about giving. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have you robbed me? Wherein have we robbed thee, I'm sorry? In tithes and offerings. Picking God's pocket. Amen. He wants us to be faithful in giving today. He wants us to be faithful in our prayer life. He wants us to be faithful in our witness. I'm going to give you this scripture again. You don't get tired of hearing it, but maybe, maybe it'll get so engraved on your brain that you'll remember this the next time you're supposed to be out there being the light you're supposed to be and being faithful in doing that. Not the light one day and the dark the next. Not people not knowing whether they're going to get Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. Amen? But who am I going to see today? Who am I going to get a hold of today? God wants us to be faithful in our witness. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If we're ever going to make a difference, if we're ever going to do what God has commissioned us to do, we must be faithful. Faithful to Him. Amen. Faithful to Him. Faithful in our actions towards other, others. Faithful in our forgiving, our compassion, and our mercy. Jesus said in John 15 in the fourth verse, here's, this teaches this morning a little bit about faithfulness. John 15 and 4 says, Abide in Me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in Me. Listen to that. You have to faithfully abide in Him in order to faithfully bring forth fruit. Abide in Me. Because see, without the tree, the branch is nothing. You can cut the branch off. He goes on to say, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in Me and I in Him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without Me you can do nothing. It's important today for us to realize He is the life giver. He is the one who flows through us to bring forth the fruit for others. And when we're separated from the life, we die. When we're not faithful to abide in Him, we die spiritually. Little by little, sooner or later, you will cease producing fruit and you will be good for nothing. 
The Bible says that every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Do you see this morning how that ties into being faithful? Abiding in Him. Walking faithfully in our spiritual walk with Him in order to bring forth spiritual fruit. Because without Him we can do nothing. Nothing. Sometimes I think that we really believe we can do it without Him. But we can't. He that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. I really am closing this time. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Remember what He told the people there in Smyrna. He said, Be faithful unto death. I will give you a crown of life. The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And we, know this ver we know these verses by heart. With the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with Him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now let's stop for just a moment in closing and look at what he says here. First he says the dead that are in Christ are going to rise first. Then he says, those, then, he says then we which are alive. He doesn't just say then we... Those of us which are alive shall be called up together. Brother Schlees, he says, those of us which are alive and remain. Listen to me. And remain. Remain in what? Remain in Christ. How is, what does he say this characteristic that the dead has that's resurrected? The dead, not all the dead, the dead in Christ. Those that were abiding in Christ. Those that were faithful to Christ whenever they died. Now he says, those of us which are alive and remain. Remain what? Remain in the faith. Remain faithful to Jesus. Remaining in the faith. Abiding in Him. Those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Not everyone that's alive, but everyone that is alive. He says, those that we, he's talking about the body of Christ, which are alive and remain in the faith. The dead in Christ that are raised, they are those that were in Christ. Those that will be took out of here in physical form, in the body, raptured out of here, will be those that are in Christ. Those that abide in Him. Those that are faithful in Him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Why? Because you've been faithful to Him. Faithful to Him. Abide in me. Endure to the end. Be alive. Be more than just alive when Jesus comes back. Be alive and remaining in the faith. Remaining in Christ. Abiding in Him. He is the vine. We are the branches. Without Him we can do nothing. Be faithful to Him today. God puts a high premium on being faithful. He wants us to realize how a lot of churches have a lot of different fancy slogans and things they came up with for the new year, talking about different stuff. And they, they've got a new goal and a new lookout. And they've got, they've got a new outlook, I'm sorry. And they've got new banners and they've got new, you know, new phrases and things to excite people. Let's try letting the word faithful mean more to us in 2013 than it did in 2012. Let's see how faithful we can be to Him, to His house, to His work than we've ever been before. God wants a faithful people. That's what He's looking for. Somebody that's faithful. Not somebody that's perfect. I like what one preacher said. I was listening. I believe it was over the station the last couple of days. I don't remember who was doing the preaching though. You might say today, well, I'm not qualified. Well, join the crowd. Ain't nobody ever been qualified. Mm -hmm. really? Amen. Ain't nobody ever been qualified. Look at the people that God called. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they wasn't none of them perfect. Mm -hmm. But they were faithful to Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else have something this morning.